Welcome to Archetypes. I'm Lee Woodruff, and I'm here with two internet entrepreneurs, Katie Finnegan and Erica Bell. And we're talking about Huckster, which you guys are both the co-founders of, which is a revolutionary new way to shop. So tell us more about this. Huckster is a tool, so it's a little button in your browser. Allows you to shop online how you normally do. You're on jcrew.com, brooksbrothers.com. Tag an item you're interested in. Then our system tracks that item and lets you know when it goes on sale or if there's any relevant coupon codes. So it's really a way to filter through all those emails you receive in your inbox and make sure the most relevant ones are popping up to you. Or that thing that I can never do, which is you find something online, you know it's going to go on sale, or you wonder if there's a cheaper one somewhere else. I never get back to that website. Yeah, I mean, we were just so frustrated with the online shopping process. Our inbox was just overflowing with special deals and offers. We were either deleting or just knew we wouldn't kind of get around to kind of checking back in on those opportunities. And so this is just one seamless way to say, you know what, this is what I'm interested in, and, and tell me when, when there's a promotion or a discount on the product. How does someone become an entrepreneur? Did it find you, or was this always in you? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a, a switch that we flipped. I mean, we both worked at, at J. Crew for a long time. We were super passionate about retail. Um, honestly, I thought I would be in the industry. Um, I knew I'd be in the industry for a long time. I didn't know that I would one day kind of branch out and try to try to start something on my own. You know, it was the frustration of the marketplace, and we were trying to solve a problem for ourselves, which was where the whole kind of spark happened. And then. Honestly, it's, it's a little bit of an addiction, I think, once you get into it, because now we just, every day is just, you know, so exciting for us that it would be hard to, to go back to our old lives. So you get an idea, and you two hatch this idea together, and then what do you do with it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And so, you know, we just talked to anyone and everyone that would sit down with us, um, entrepreneurs, people that worked at startups, um, to gain advice. You know, we thought we just had to find this engineer day one and kind of go from, you know, A to Z overnight, but we were actually encouraged, you know, roll up your sleeves, like figure out a way to do it. If this is really, you know, a passion, just make it a reality. And so we became the tool ourselves. We actually tracked products online, 4 a.m. in the morning, after work at night, um, and, and proved out the concept just with kind of our, our friends, our family, uh, our target demographic. So you guys kind of became the browser in a way. You yeah. sort of did the work that ultimately Huckster.com does for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we did it for a small group of 10 people um, just to see if it was it just us that was frustrated by this or were other people? Was this actually a valuable, a valuable tool to build, to invest the time, energy uh, in doing so? And did you find overwhelmingly that it was? Was that what... Yeah, I mean, sense. just the initial reactions as we would send these alerts out to our, our target kind of demo, they would just be so excited and then write us back, I bought it, and not only did I buy it, but I didn't even waste my time browsing. Like, it saved me so much time in my day, and it was just so efficient, and we were like, this is, this is perfect. This is exactly what kind of we had set out to do. But, you know, our plan, you know, was to do this safe, and to kind of do this, like mitigate risks. So we were actually gonna go part-time in our jobs and, and still feel it out once we met our engineer. And then we had this aha moment. Um, I was actually up at, at Colgate, sitting on a panel, and got my opportunity to pitch the story. And the response was overwhelming. This was like an entrepreneur's weekend or something, yes, right? So the whole back topic was to hatch ideas. Yeah, coming out of that, I mean, just the emails were flooding in, like, I'm still obsessed with what you're doing, I wanna know more. And it's like, I want to give later. you $1,000. People I want to give you $5,000, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And it was one of those moments where we had to take this huge leap, and it was going to go one way or the other, but we had to take that risk. And, and we, two weeks later, we had left our day jobs, and we were doing it full time. And we haven't even taken the time to stop and look back since. But, I mean, I think if we had done it that safe way, we would never be where we were today. Yeah. So it was the ability to really stop and say, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. And that was your moment. And it is paying off. So far. <laughs> what about the, the venture cap side of it, the raising money side, the going out and getting the business side? Was that a place where you had to stop and, and get advice, or was the groundwork laid on that one sort of magical weekend where you yeah. had your switch flipped? We, um, we had been lucky enough that we had been set up with an amazing lawyer. We would have made, I think, poor decisions at the time, because people wanted to throw $500 here, $500 there, and 
we had nothing, so we wanted to take everything. And he was like, no, money isn't just about a checkbook, it's about strategically taking the right money from the right people. And we can't thank him enough to this day for, for kind of pointing us in that path. What advice do you have for someone out there who's thinking about going into business with a good friend or someone that they've known for a long time? Is there any particular piece of advice you wish you'd had when you started on this? Well, I think the fact that we weren't, I mean, we were friends and we, we had a friendship, but we built our relationship off a business relationship. We had to work very closely together in, in a stressful environment when we first met each other. And so I think we knew people are kind of tipping points, which was really important. And, and if you don't know that, you need to figure that out before you kind of go too deep because you might figure it out too late. So, you know, doing a project together or do something that's a little outside of just having breakfast together or having coffee or whatever it is. Um, do something that's stressful and even train for a marathon. Like do something that challenges yourself. Um, you really get to learn the person, uh, w which was important for us knowing each other going into it. Just being able to kind of acknowledge your own strengths and weaknesses. So we yeah, really we did that. balance each other out. So to kind of be able to say on paper, like these are the things I think I'm really good at. These are the things I don't think I'm so good at. For Katie to be able to say, hey, Erica, actually, you might think you're good at that, but... <laughs> <laughs> and did you do that? Yeah. Did you we have to sort did. of say, uh, not so much? We did that in, like, January, about a month in, I think. Yeah. We just, said we had to have kind of a, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and what do you want to build? Like, maybe it's a weakness, but it's something I'm interested in developing. And where do you want to see the company in, let's say, a year, five years from now? We want Huxer to be, like, I hucked it. Those terms, we want that to be kind of a household, a household I mean. thing, you know? Oh, I hucked this table, I got it for 20% off. Just like how people <laughs> say, I got it at Target, and it's kind of a, an, interesting, an interesting way to describe a product. And we see it kind of really streamlining and revolutionizing the way you shop online. So while it's price alerts today, there's a lot of you know, very interesting things to really just break down those barriers to purchasing. Um, in the pipeline, and, and we're just excited to kind of tick them off one by one. So we're going to make Huck a verb, right, in the American vernacular. Yes. I like it. That's yeah. the goal. I'm going to go Huck something right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Erica and Katie from Huckster.com, and thank you for watching Archetypes. And we'll be back, and if there's a little bit of an entrepreneur in you, I think we all learned something today.